language, compare it to a two, compare it to a one. Under organization and progression. Let's see what you have. On a three. And I have it up here if you want to look up here. You also have an abridged version. sure that when you're looking through a score point three, comparing it to the language in a score point <coughs> one under organization. What do you notice about the language? How is it different? Okay. Appropriate. Appropriate. Continue with that. Um, appropriate to the purpose and responsive to the demands of the prompt. They addressed the prompt, right? Mm -hmm. There was no doubt in what we read that they addressed the prompt. It's appropriate. Okay, what else do you notice? More details. More details. What do the details do? Contribute, Contribute to, the effectiveness. to the effectiveness. Right. Organizational strategies that are delightful. They have literary devices, they have organizational organizational mm -hmm. strategies that work for the narrative. It's adequately controlled. The sentence to sentence connections are sufficient to support the logical movement. You see it coming out. Transitions are meaningful. So you don't see that in a two talking about transitions. Other transitions from sentence to sentence are too perfunctory or weak. They might, they might, it might be a weak transition. And perfunctory means it's there, but it really doesn't serve a purpose. Mm -hmm. But on this one, they're sufficient. The use of transition has a purpose. It moves the writing. Look at development of ideas. How is the language different? Specific details. Okay, so you said specific details? Details, details add substance. Mm -hmm. They're written for a reason. You, they help you visualize what's going on. Reflect thoughtfulness. Yes, reflects thoughtfulness. Whereas the other one says little or no thoughtfulness. Mm -hmm. And you have a realistic situation again providing re reasonable motivations for behavior or actions. Then you see some sense of why the experience was important to the writer. That's important. If I read a paper and I can't figure out why was it important to the reader, <coughs> I'm sorry, to the writer, it's going to get a two or less. But after I read it, I can say, wow, that was an experience that was important to that person who wrote it. I can tell. And that's a part of our development of ideas. So it's thoughtful, the motivations are reasonable, there is some sense of why it's important to the, to the writer. Then we're going to go to the use of language conventions. Check out word choice, the sentences, and the use of conventions. What do you notice? Explain that some more. Specific. The word choice is specific and con concrete. You can even say concise. They thought about the words they want to use. And it's varied. It's probably varied. For the most part, specific and concrete. Yeah, for the most part. It's not perfect, uh -huh. nor is it for perfect, but this one is for the most part. And that's a change from what was used before. The sentences are varied and adequately controlled. And that contributes to the effectiveness, effectiveness of the piece and affects the reader. And you have the word adequate. It seems like satisfactory here. Adequate, adequate. Adequate command of sentence boundaries. There may be some errors. Some errors may be evident. They create few, if any, disruptions. In the fluency of the writing, they do not affect the clarity. So let's look at it and see what this, this might look like. Okay, this is called goal. You see how they're using a the title there? A 
when we talked about use of the title and the misuse of the title. But anyways, it was a Sunday afternoon in the middle of August, and I was at soccer tryouts. I was really shaky, and I was looking around everywhere. I could feel the adrenaline pumping through my body, and I felt like I was in my worst nightmare. Whoa. I was trying to tell myself I could do it. Then I finally got over it. I started talking to all of my friends. Then the coach blew the whistle and we all jogged over towards him. He started calling us by name, one by one, until I was the only one left. It was my turn. All I had to do was kick the ball in the goal. I prepared for my kick and all of the feeling rushed right back to me. I overcame it and bam, right in the goal. This is a story of the time I learned I was good at soccer. What makes this, a, uh, what makes this satisfactory? Look through that and have a discussion in your group. satisfactory, which is a good piece of writing. It's considered high quality. What makes this high quality? The descriptive language. The descriptive language. Can you give me an example? I think it was his worst nightmare and the adrenaline pumping. The adrenaline pumping, his worst nightmare. When he came into this writing, he came in strong. He was like, I want to read more. I, I can't wait to hear what's going to happen. He had, or she had, me wanting to know more. What else do you notice? So the details. This expression as well. Like bam. Maybe the bam. The expression, the word choice, right? Very good. Bam. And then he, what he had done with it. And I saw some sentence boundaries. He has periods. Mm -hmm. So his sentence yeah. boundaries are, are adequately controlled? Yeah, he's, mm -hmm. yeah. I like his word choice yeah. on some of it. Adrenaline, I jogged over there. Really shaking. Shaking, right? And that adds to the to the voice. Uh -huh. To me, it adds to the voice of the piece. Why isn't it a four? We haven't discussed a four yet, but why would you think? Any ideas? Because he had it going on. It's not on. vivid enough. He had it going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, yeah, where does the vividness start to come out? He says... Um, can you go back? Yeah, I can go back. <clears throat> Thank you. I felt like I was in my worst nightmare. I felt like I was in my worst nightmare. That's pretty vivid. Yeah, that's pretty vivid. So. And I the first part of it that. was very much so. That's true, yeah. And then I started that's talking that. to all of my friends and that uh -huh. sort of right. like, just yeah, tell me, tell me, tell me. Uh -huh. Right? And then it becomes vivid again. I, all I had to do was kick the ball. Kick the, the ball. ball. So you have that this right? morning. I feel like the feeling rushed right back right. to me. Those are, but in order to be a four, there has to be an economy of yes. language. Yes. All the language that you use is, is, is tight. It goes together completely. Mm -hmm. He had a few lapses. He did. But it was still satisfactory. Mm -hmm. It was still good. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I remember something about this last year. At the end, he did say, this is the time I learned something. Mm -hmm. or don't they need to have that somewhere in their paper? They do not have to directly state, this is the time that I learned something. But as you are reading through it, if you can infer that, then that is, that is fine, too. Oh, okay. okay? So he did address the prompt, in my opinion. He, he could have done it stronger. It would be a four. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't have to state in the conclusion, this is a time I learned something. That's perfunctory, or that's not perfunctory, that's just sort of boring the way he did that at the end. May, and, but that's a good idea. Maybe he could craft it in a different way. Not, you know? But I can infer that he's kicking it and he got it in there and that's, that's 
so I can infer about that. So let's move on to the next one. The first time I ice skated. Here we go. I entered the mall smelling the smell of dirty shoes, greasy food, and cookie cake. I walked slowly to the ice skating place. I could feel my heart pounding harder and harder. As I got closer, the smelly socks filled my nostrils. <laughs> Mommy, are you sure you've done this before? I asked, my eyes locked on the rink. She didn't answer. I shuffled my feet to ice skate renting place. A man popped at the corner. He had brown hair as deep as chocolate and green eyes. Can I help you, he asked kindly. As I too, I asked with my voice shivering. He got me what I wanted, white skates. I put them on, shivering. A couple of seconds later, I was standing up on my skates, waiting for my mom to be done wrestling her skates. I started to chew my nails and rock on my skates. Finally, my mom was done. We wobbled like penguins to the door. <laughs> I stepped slowly inside the rink. It's like walking, my mom said, swooshing past me. I did what she told me. I kept doing it. Finally, she, I caught up to her. We skated for 20 more minutes. We both got exhausted. So we took off our skates and walked out of the rink. Have a conversation in your room. What makes us a three? Specific details add substance, some substance. Mm -hmm. These details contribute to the portrayal of the experience. Would you agree with that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Does it reflect some thoughtfulness on her part? Yes. I think so. Lots of thoughtfulness yeah, under, you yeah. go under development of ideas, right? Because she's even asking the question, Mom, are you sure you've done this? Right. Before? So that's part of that thoughtfulness piece. The thoughtfulness of having that conversation, yes. the dialogue. Mom, have you been here before? Mm -hmm. So that shows that she's not so sure about being there, right? Um, I'm going to read this part. I'm sorry, what did you say? Of, like, the experience I could understand, like, why it was important to her. There you go. That's where I was going to go. The narrative convey, conveys some sense of why the experience was important to the writer. Could you say that you could figure out why this was important to her? I could say yes. She was hesitant about going, and she, she did it, and she loved it. You can see that. She painted that picture. What about her word choice? Very good. I was looking at all of her, well, not all of, but the wet words that she used, like wobbled, wobbled the eyes and shuffled. And feet. shuffled, right. That brings that voice to her writing. Mm -hmm. The way she chose her words. Now, she repeated shiver twice, but that's not a big deal. Yeah. Right. She's actually attempting to use, <laughs> I would consider, above grade level vocabulary, right? I love the penguin wobbling part. I, I, that made me laugh. I just want, I was like, I could just picture that. All right? So she has adequate command of sentence boundaries, no doubt. Word choice is there. She does, for the most part, have a structure to her writing. It's quite impressive. She said, feel my nostrils. You can feel your nostrils. I know. It's like, that must, those, those socks must have stunk up something, right? Yeah. Uh, something bad. So, she had, uh, overall, was there any parts where 
she dropped us as a reader. That like, oh, uh, because if we're if it's if it's a, a four, every detail goes together and paints this great yeah, picture. Yeah, you run out of space. Yeah. So yeah. Like, then we got tired. And right. Yeah. So we're like, then we went home, and it's like, oh, yeah. didn't you feel like as a reader, like, oh, don't stop now. And yet she did that. And we took over our skates and we did, it was almost so like she wanted to fill up those last three right. lines. Right. right? But for the most part, very strong piece of writing. It's true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we get a good idea of what a three would look like. Now accomplished. Don't you just love the way that sounds? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm so accomplished. <laughs> so we're going to be under the accomplished umbrella. Look at under the organization. And progression of ideas. What does that sound like? How is that different? There's no psalm, little, or no. There's no psalm, little, or no. What's the language instead? What does it replace? It is, is appropriate. It's, it's not no. most part. Yeah, of it's certain. Yeah. It's appropriate. Mm -hmm. it doesn't say for the most part. It's appropriate. It's not adequate. It's well. It's not adequate, it's well suited. All the details. All the details all contribute, the details. not just some. So it all will contribute. Yes. Clearly, clearly versus skillfully. Clearly versus skillfully, right? That sounds wonderful. Skillfully conveys the experience. Vivid and expressive. Vivid and expressive. Significantly. Significantly. So there, the four is it. <laughs> Look under development of ideas and use of language convention. See what pops out to you there. Engaging. Engaging. The piece is engaging for the reader and the writer. Yes, you want to continue reading. You don't want to stop. Right, you hook the reader. And you don't drop it. Right. There's no dropping it. Thoughtful and engaging, like you're saying. It says plausible motivations for behavior or actions. I didn't see that any place. The first time I'm hearing plausible motivations. Mm -hmm. Good sense. A good sense of why the experience is important. All of the details contribute to the portrayal of the experience. So when you read it, you're going to know without a doubt why that person wrote it. Why it was important to the writer. No doubt. What about your word choice? You said vivid and expressive, right? Mm -hmm. A keen awareness. Now, the sentences are purposeful, varied. They're varied and well-controlled. You might have some sentences that are compound sentences. You might have simple sentences. You might even see complex sentences there. But they're varied for the purpose. They're written with an intent. And there's a consistent command of sentence boundaries. But you might have minor errors. But guess what? They don't detract from the fluency. And because they have such great conventions, it contributes to the effectiveness of it. You might see some students taking big risks in their spelling. Spelling is this, this, this great word that they want to use. But there are not going to be tons of them. And, and it's, it's, a, it's a student using above level, in my opinion, it's a student using above level vocabulary, trying to take a risk. But it's not going to stop your fluency at all. And you will have a few of those. So let's see what a four looks like. Fencing. It was my first day of fencing. I barely made it on time. When I got there, the first thing we did was stretch a lot. Soon I went with a fencing coach for beginners and got dressed in a fencing gear. We were handed a fencing sword, which was a thin blade with a flat tip. The coach paired us up with the person that we were going to fence. I was nervous that the sword was going to hurt me. I was paired with a girl who had been there a lot longer than me. We started the fight, the first of five points wins. I lunged forward and extended my arm. I scored the first point. The next round, I advanced and lunged, but she counterattacked and scored the point. Does that say soon? Soon later, it was four to four, I thought fast. I slowly advanced, driving her back. Then I quickly lunged, hitting her on her helmet. I had won my first battle. I knew I was pretty good at fencing. My mom drove me home. I was extremely excited. Except for that last part. What do you notice? What? What? The punctuation is, is there. So the convention.
intentions are there. Mm -hmm. What what is the what what would you take away from this piece of writing? For you, the punctuation is there, mm -hmm. which creates well, a easy. It helps us. It's easier to read because it's there. I didn't have. I didn't trip up. <coughs> Maybe no. I don't think I tripped up on that. To me, the word choice was Language. was crazy. Mm -hmm. The vocabulary, like the like lunging. That. And the way it was paced, I always felt like I was going there fencing. I don't know anything about fencing, but I was there. I'm like, what's going to happen next? Had me. They had me the whole time. Except for the very end. But we're not going to penalize the person. For this part, my mom drove me home. If he, if it's not, This is a first draft. Overall, I would say all the ideas, that little phrase right there, I was extremely excited. If they just took that, but it's overall pretty strong. Is it, so why is it so different than the other one? Because the, the other one, the issue two, was the ending, the one with the girl. Right, singing. but she had like a couple sentences where she sort of just went off. Okay. And he's like here, 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 okay. here, and it was just a little bit. Okay. You're gonna see the one from TEA sort of leaves off a little bit too, because we did say that all ideas contribute. They all do, except for that little minor one. But she had like a couple points where. She dropped, but it was more towards the end. But that would be a high three, for what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. And this would probably be a low four. That's what I was thinking with the other one. Right? Three. Yes. Because we do. We have, we have them in yes. that range. Mm -hmm. That's good to have this conversation. Let's say you and I were grading this. And you gave me your paper, and I gave you mine. And I graded yours first, and you gave it a three. But I actually, I gave it a four, and then later on you gave it a three. We have a conversation about it, right? Who's right? I am. We both are. Yeah. Well, you're always right. I'm yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> giddy. But hypothetically, <laughs> hypothetically, if we can go back to the rubric and talk about it, yeah. it will be. That's how some kids get a seven on the test. Because someone really? would have given it a three, another score would have given it a mm -hmm. four. Mm -hmm. We're not, as long as we're not a one and a four off, right? right. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. we're going to have That's that. True. Even the people at TEA are off. Maybe one or two. Like my daughter in her test last year, and in the course, she got a six, right? So they were both in agreement, a three and a three. But the judges don't have to be in agreement. There were some of our kids that had gotten a five. Mm. What's that mean? Someone got a three, and, and another score gave it a two, so it was considered a five. It was just between basic and, and satisfactory. So it's okay to have that conversation, because the conversation is the most important thing. To me, we have this, we're talking about it. The more we, we have our conversation about it, the more we converse about it, the more we have it in our brain. It's great to have this dialogue. Okay? And I see. That's when I was looking at that. I was like, ooh, that could be too. But I'm thinking, it's a, that's in my opinion, it's a high three. And this is a low four. But I'm not, you're not saying, but wait a minute, that's a two. Right, no. We're not off like that. So, and in that case, if that happens in TA, there's a third person that comes in, and uh, I don't know what they do with it. But I do know... There's usually a two scores. Okay. So, I'm going to show you one more. This is what's released from TEA. The what you have in your hand is what we had get, uh, gleaned last year from our students when they took the benchmark for the first time back in November. It was close to December. Right? TEA has not released narrative samples except for a four. They've released a four, three, and a two in expository, but have not yet given us what it looks like to be in the narrative frame of a three, two, and a one. I don't know when they're going to do it. They say whenever they get time. So we need to take the bull by the horns and do it ourselves. So let's look at this one. This is what TEA considers to be a four. And they only gave us one to look at. So I learned how to ride a bicycle after being helped. One breezy afternoon, I was blowing bubbles in my front yard and a man on a bicycle pedaled by. Daddy, daddy, I cried. I want to try that. Okay, I'll go get the bike and the helmet, he said, walking toward the side of the house where we keep the bikes. Soon enough, there was a helmet strapped to my head, a bike beneath me, and a father beside me. My legs began circling, and I started rolling, my father jogging beside me, ready to catch me if I tumbled. Forgetting to turn, I skidded to a halt at the curb. 
A sharp pain stabbed my knee, and I felt something trickle down my leg. I stood up and limped back across the street while my father rolled the bike next to me. Maybe we should try again tomorrow, he said gently. I nodded in agreement. That night, I dreamed I was a professional cyclist. <laughs> I won every race I was a part of. Suddenly, my wheel hit a rock, and my eyes jolted open. I tossed clean clothes on, rushed downstairs, had breakfast, and told my dad I was ready. I hopped back on the bike and started moving again. Slowly, my dad let go of my shoulders. I was doing it. I was riding a bike. I stopped and walked the bike back. I was proud of myself. One weekend, he even begged me to go on a bike ride. I even begged him to go on a bike ride. He finally said yes, and off we went. <coughs> this is considered a four. Why? What makes it a four for you? What do you take from this? What stays with you? The transition. The transition. Convention. The conventions are strong. The transitions. Right. One, uh, one sentence to another. Mm -hmm. it's, they're seamless, right? Okay. The part that I like the most is where the blood trickles down the leg. Um, because that, I can visualize that. And he shows how he felt. You can tell this was important to him. All right? But if you look at the complexity of the sentences, you see several complex sentences. You see some compounds. You see very few simple. Although simples are okay to put in there too. But you see the complexity of his language. He uses several prepositional phrases. He uses independent and dependent clauses flawlessly. Maybe a little bit too much. But you can see that's the, com the complexity. That's what, that's what T.A. was wild with. And you definitely felt, wow, this is something that's important to this person. I was doing it. I was riding a bike. The part that I thought that sort of went with the last two that we worked out, it's he, I, one weekend I even begged to go on a bike ride. He finally said yes, and off we went. I see how it goes with it, but I also could see how you really don't need to include that. You know what I mean? But other than that, he could have started, I was proud of myself and done. Yes. Sometimes I think kids think that they have to fill in every line. And I think that that could have happened there, but I also believe that he could have intentionally done that, and that, that worked too, because it's showing how he learned how to ride a bike, and now he's going, he's going town with it. That's okay, too. We don't know what, what his frame of mind was. But it's definitely a strong piece of writing. Quality writing. And so this is what we have when we're looking at the different types of writing. The, not the different types of writing, but looking at the different levels of writing. This is my cat again. I'm going to show you that. I should have gone back. I'm going to come back over here and bring it back up. What I'd like to talk to you about now is when we're looking at our writing and we're trying to decide what category we give it, do we give it limited? Do we give it, I'm sorry, very limited, basic, accomplished? Let's also look at what the student brings. What are the strengths? What are the challenges? Because even when we're looking at the basic, we saw potential. I saw potential in all of these pieces. These are considered a first draft. None of these are perfect. But when you get to accomplish, it's getting close. It's getting to what effect does it have on the reader. So when you're talking to your kids about it, think, talk to them about what effect does this have on the reader. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to write this down real quick over here. And it might be something you want to use. And if you want, I can send it to you. It's using the rubric from a reader's point of view. If you had a one, the reader would say, huh? And the eyes would be covered up because they can't see what you're trying to say. It would be a huh. If you're looking at a two, it's okay. The reader can see part of it. When you're looking at a three, this is good. Mm -hmm. It's good. The reader is starting to be able to see through both. When you're looking at a four, it's a wow. And they're wide open. 
want them to feel what I felt. I want them to know it's important to me. And using conventions and using details and using different literary devices, all these things transitioned, bringing one sentence into another sentence, all these things can bring you to a wow. So when you're thinking about talking to your students about it, remember, what are some things that they did that shows progress? And what are, what are some things that still, they're still challenged with? Because this is October. And we're always growing as writers and thinkers and readers. What does it do to you as a reader? And if you all are having peer conferencing in your class, you might want to talk to them about this. What does it do to the reader? What does it do to you? Also, um, yeah. This is good to use with the activity that we did last Thursday. Yeah. With a point right. and a side uh -huh. back. Right. And when you get them in that small group situation, right. so that they can hear from the readers, they, and the readers can go ahead and say, oh, okay, this was okay, I was able to see this. Yeah, that, yeah and that, but, that peer conferencing, uh -huh. bringing this into exactly. it, later on, yes, because we mm -hmm. want to build it with the positivity of I'm going to add this piece to that. that activity. But when we're talking mm -hmm. about positive, about pointing, we're all positive. Mm -hmm. When we're going in the say back, we're just asking questions and what right. we want to know about, plus what we like. This, I think, is a little bit later down uh -huh. the line because we want to build that first. Yes. And then we can talk about it. And you can look at other people's writing and say what you think about it. As a reader, what did it do to you? Mm -hmm. As a writer, how can I make it better? You know? There's a rubric that comes from Gretchen Burnaby, and um, okay. she has yeah. a lot of these in it. I will send mm -hmm. that to you. If you email me, I will send it to you. I have that. She has a little spiel about what does it do to the reader. The kid's thinking about what they're writing and who's it for, the instant audience. So anyhow, when you're looking over your samples, mm -hmm. have a great time with it. Have the conversation. What does Noemi think? What does Cheryl think? And what do I think based on this? Let's have a collaborative conversation. I don't believe anybody's wrong. We're wrong if we don't do that. We have these conversations. We can build up our, our own knowledge and our own thinking. And then have a conversation with kids about it. Mm -hmm. Maybe you haven't had time to talk to them about the rubric. That's fine. Mm -hmm. we, we're going to hit that, too. We'll, we'll be working on that. Right? Are there any questions or comments that you have about what we've done? I, I just have a quick one. Yeah. When you talk about, uh, last Friday was the first time I heard about how it's the papers are scored uh -huh. by TEA. Mm -hmm. So... What is the range? Like, um, okay, the range. Know, it's scored by two people. Those scores are added together. Mm -hmm. Unless there's a big gap, then the third person scores it. And they're they just actually, scores. you know what? I remember now. They multiply it by two. So let's say you and I were off by like um, a light year. Okay, mm -hmm. you gave it a one. I gave it a four. Where it's like we just we got problems. Okay, right. so we call in someone else. You know, Houston, we got a problem. They come in. That person is a master scorer, even though the other people are good. So but they bring in the master, and then they just multiply it by two. Okay. So this is what it looks like. And these are the scores that we got back from TEA. Okay, it goes in this range. Okay? And this is, this is the wise, but this is considered very limited. The zero is not scorable. You'll see that. Right. And actually, you don't even have this. You're going to have very limited. And then this is between these two scores, mm -hmm. right? So this is called between um, very limited and basic. That's if you can't. If your one of your students got a three, it's not the old three, which we consider quality writing. It would be considered between very limited and basic. And if your child got a four, that means that it is considered just basic because that is two plus two. You see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Exactly. And this is one plus two. One scores plus another score. And so every one of these things here would be between, between, between. So this one is between what and what? Okay. Between, so between basic, basic and, and, and satisfactory. satisfactory. And the, this is solid, right? Right. So that's a three and a three. This is a two and a three. See how that goes? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So this is satisfactory. And then my idea is you're going here to here, you're getting quality right there. I would even put this in there when you're thinking mm -hmm. about it. Um, seven and eight. Seven is between mm -hmm. satisfactory. satisfactory and accomplished. And accomplished, right. Mm -hmm. See how this works? And this is accomplished. Okay. Mm -hmm. But when you're looking yes. at your school.
you're looking at your scores last May, you're looking at your scores that coming up this May. I go like this. Let's say a one and a two. That is what considered very limited and basic. Not good. Mm -hmm. Not where we want our students to be thinking. Because if we're going to have them college ready, we have to have them at a three and a four. We have to have them at satisfactory and accomplished. So this is low quality. This is high. So thinking about your scores from last year or thinking about where you project right now, if you can project, I don't know if you can. What, if, what would happen if 80% of my students were in this and 20% were here? What would happen? I would have to say, well, what am I doing? What am I not doing? Because I want my children to, to be college ready. And I want them to be ready for fifth grade in thinking and reading and writing. Because if you're, you cannot write above your reading level, right? But if you are doing lots of writing, your reading level will increase. And you're doing lots of talking and doing them, speaking, listening, reading, and writing. It all connects. You're doing a lot of that their reading level will jump because it's their thinking level. Their thinking level. Reading, writing, speaking, listening throughout the content areas. So I would like, in my student, maybe this is where it's going to be right now. But what, what happens in, in, in March, April, May? I want this to be turned on its head, right? Yes. Actually, I don't want 20% there. But I would like all of mine to be in quality writing because it's quality thinking. You got to be able to synthesize. You have to be able to revise within that synthesis, right? You have to come up with these create, create these ideas. We have a lot of things we work with in the writing framework about it, but it directly connects to the reading. And we're talking about AYP, but we're doing a lot of good writing instruction. It's going to help with AYP. And we're doing a lot of thinking, reading, writing, listening, and speaking. They all work together. And we think about how does it, what, what effect does it have on the reader. All right? So I hope you uh, found this informative today. Very good. And I wanted, do you have any questions or, 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 or uh, reflective uh, comments about today? Has TEA, um, has TEA um, released any of the Spanish? No. They have not released any Spanish, and I've asked them about it. And I don't know when they're going to release the Spanish, if they're going to release the Spanish. But tomorrow or the next day or whenever I can get on the phone, I'm going to call and ask again. Because I said, we have some English. At least we have some English. We don't have any Spanish. Exactly. All right. This is what I've been told. January is when they're going to release the scores, the passing standards, what used to be considered commended. I can't remember the name of it now. Advanced. Okay. Well, advanced is. But I mean, the combination of your multiple choice with that, with oh, the, the mechanical, with the uh, yeah, the, editing, the multiple you know? choice with mm -hmm. the um, the composition. Okay. We yeah. What if you have? They said that you know you can still get a one mm -hmm. and pass, right? But I wouldn't think you could get a one in both types of writing and still pass. But there's no gatekeeper like it used to be. Like you had to get a two, three, or four just to have a possibility of passing, no matter what you did on the editing and revising. Mm -hmm. They have a combination that's going to work, a formula. We don't know that formula. They haven't released it. I believe January is when they're going to release it. So we will know, where are we? A little bit more than what we know now. We know now what quality writing is. We know that by using this rubric, we want our kids at college ready. Yes. And the state is saying, you know, two is not going to cut it anymore. Not that it ever did. I mean, I never went into fourth grade teaching fourth grade. So I want to have my kids all basic. No, 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 no. I want my kids at the highest level that they can attain, that I can help them attain. Right? But it's no longer, I, I guess, considered okay, it's okay. Because we, we're looking college ready, right? So any, any other questions about uh, anything that's come up? So what are you taking away from today's workshop? What are some things that, that you learned today that you want to remember for tomorrow? Talk in your group. What's your takeaway?
are some takeaways from today? What are some things you want to remember? The power of the collaboration? Right, and understanding how it goes. Good, so it's a collaboration and, a, and having a, a deeper understanding. Okay. I like yes. seeing examples of one, two, three, four, so that I can see where my, I can definitely tell you where my students are right now. So with the anchor paper, yeah. with the rubric, you need right. them both with that collaborative conversation. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, let me see if there's anything else. Um, yes, Carolyn. And Cheryl reminded us. If any one part of the writing is, say, a one, then the whole thing is a one. Yes. Or if any one part is a two, the whole thing is a two. It, that's, yeah, that's mostly, that's mostly true. That's mostly true. Portion. Yeah. For example, if you have a student that has no sentence boundaries, they're going to get a one. Even, Even though they have other things in there, and that's a good conversation with that child. Wow, look what you would have had. You know? It's, in some cases, that's true. In that case, it is true. Okay? Yeah, we had conversations about it last year, but it's, but when you're looking at it, you might have some in this area of a three and in a couple in area, maybe one in the area of a two. It's going to bring it. It's going to bring it down most of the time. Okay? There are exceptions to the rule, right? Um, anyways, have a good evening, and I hope that this was good for you yeah, as far as helpful. If you could take it one minute and write down your comments. Carolyn, could I ask you to take one minute and write your comments down? Oh, sure. Everyone, if you could just, I have the paper there, if you don't mind. Also, um, on your comments, if you'd write your name, and if you want me to send you something via email, I will do it. That will be a good reminder for me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming, and don't forget to sign in.